Hi beautiful people, welcome to Kate Space and Pixie K Designs. I am going to continue on working on my little books here and if you've been following along, uh, that's great. Thanks for all your wonderful comments and welcome to new, any new subscribers. Uh, let's just recap, I'll just recap what I've done so far. Yeah, so, uh, right, we have all our signatures here, and we went through and added some gesso and cream paint, and then did some stamping on, on those. And now, there's some other things that we can do with our pages before, well, I... I've tried doing it, some of these things with the signatures sewn in and that hasn't worked so well. So I try and remember to do all these things before I sew the signatures in. And I have just bought this really beautiful embossing folder, dry embossing folder. And I'm going to have a play with that because I wouldn't mind having some of that through my book. It's quite, it's lovely and floral, which I think suits the uh, the book style and the covers. So there's that that I'd like to do. I then would like to also do, get the pages that I've made tuck spots on. And I'm going to do some sewing on my sewing machine with those. If you don't have a sewing machine and you're following along, you just use glue, perfectly fine. Or you can hand stitch them. I think I've done enough hand stitching on these books to last a lifetime. But I will be doing some more hand stitching when I start making the little, the little snippety things and tags. Or, or the little tabs that will go on the pages and things like that. But I don't want to hand sew my pages as such so there's that then um you will remember i'm a bit of a fan of the old texture paste and i made those did that little video of the texture paste i would quite like to do some of that because another thing that i've just treated myself to is oh, some lovely tim holtz stencils so i've bought the little miniature ones and I'm still, uh, the jury's still out on whether I should have bought them all this size. But anyway, I've got that one, which is the bigger size. And then I've got the three mini layering ones. But they're still pretty cute. That's how that little layering one came out when I was having a play. That's the paper texture paste, which is super, it's quite rough. It's got a lot of, well, texture, I guess you'd say. To it and then I've got my other texture paste which so is a bit smoother I'm not sure which one I'm going to use I might use both I don't know and what else will we be doing maybe a little bit of heat embossing I've got a couple of stamps floral stamps so maybe a little bit of heat embossing now all those things I'll probably do before before I sew my signatures in and then also I might do a little bit of decoupage napkin decoupage so I've chosen I think I'm going to use this one for one of the books I've got lots of that and then I think I might use some of the flowers out of this one for the other books because it's got the blue and the pink and some green in it not quite not so keen on the birds probably won't use the birds but we'll see so that's the plan going forwards and then sewing in the signatures and then making some ephemera to go in the pockets and books so yeah that's where we're at so i've got my scissors hang on i'm just having a cup of sip of tea it's really wet here today it was a beautiful day yesterday and today it's pouring with rain do i need to do this embossing on camera i don't know Anyway, I'm going to, so I'll just get my brand new embossing folder that arrived today. Very excited. Hard to get nice ones here for a reasonable price. Now, what happened was when I tried it out and I used this plate, it basically cut through my paper. So I just use my base plate and my, I don't know, thinlets, 
thin die adapter and then some folded over cardstock. It's a bit huckery, but it works. And what I want to try is get one of these old book pages. Now the thing is, if you're also, I guess if you're also um, dry embossing some old paper, you've got more of a chance that it's going to rip. You need to be a little bit more aware of the fact that the um, that the paper is a bit friable. Anyway, I'm going to give it a go. So I'm going to pop the page in. So this is what I don't know. Oh, see, no one can even see what I'm doing. This doesn't quite fit in the embossing folder hole. I wonder if you can just go like that. We're going to find out. I'm going to have a little bit of a play. I haven't done a lot of embossing. Oh, yeah, of course, you can go like that. So put it in that way so that goes... All right, here goes nothing. Now, everybody else's plates looking like this. Have you ever seen anything so wonky and bendy? I think I need new ones. Anyway, it seems to do the job. Oops, I put the handle on the wrong side. Okay, here we go. So this doesn't feel like there's a lot of pressure there, but... What I found was that's all you really need with this folder. It's quite... Oh, see, even that's ripped the page. Oh, that's so disappointing. Wow, I can't believe it. Okay. Let's try again. Oh, I'm sad about that. Right, let's try again without that piece of paper, cardboard. Okay, well that, oh that looks quite cool. It's only, it's worked quite strongly on one side and hardly at all there. So you've got a kind of a graduated look. I'd probably use that for something. I don't know what right now, because it's not what I had in mind, but. Okay, so embossed a few things, wasn't that successful. Uh, I wanted to emboss this little old piece of paper, and as you can see, it's torn right through it. Actually, I'm going to tear that off. Don't know. Um, and so, yeah, same with this one. Mm, pretty sad about that, but that's okay. Um, this one here, this one's quite nice, the way this one's come out. I'll probably use that for something, I'm not sure. As you can see, I'm not very experienced with embossing, so. And then I did something just on some copy paper, but I used hard, I didn't really even use any pressure to do that. <laughs> Maybe I should try the rolling pin. <laughs> anyway. Seems like that particular embossing folder is probably best for uh, cardstock. So let's, I'm going to just get on and do my sewing, I think. Um, I need to change the thread and take my, take all my pages over it and just sew away. So I'm going to turn the camera off and come back for that. Right, I've I think I've organised my papers. I had a little bit of a disaster there, but we're back. We're back, I think. Now, oops. <laughs> oops. <laughs> now we, I'm going to have a, a go with my stenciling. Probably not the sort of thing you should do on camera, but hey, why not? Let's give it a go. Should we go with the roses or the, this one? I'm going to go with this one for now, and I'm going to start here. Get my little spatula -y thing, and I'm using this moulding paste, an Italia traditional moulding paste. I don't know what it is, 
that seems to work. And I'm going to give this a go. And, oh, I can't even pick it up off the table. There we go. And just find a random spot. And go like that. Peel it off and move it there to let it dry. I'm going to get right. I don't know how much I want to do on the actual pages. Wouldn't mind a little bit down there, that would be cute. Smudged it a bit. That's all right. Put that one there. And then maybe do some here. Well, actually, maybe I'll do it on the plain piece. go so we need to let those dry another signature and smooth it on Don't do that. Separate your signatures because it will get everywhere. <laughs> Just going to pop that one there for a little bit. Again, just wipe off the excess that you don't want, the bits that have splidged over. Right, so my signatures are probably going to get all wonky again, so I'm just going to probably I want to do it all at once, but of course it has to dry, so it's quite a slow process, this bit, but I will be back when I've done it. Okay, see ya. So, okay, I've done a little bit of the texture paste throughout. Um, I'm struggling uh, to video this because I, I tend to go all over the place when I'm doing all this stuff because I go here and then I think of something else anyway. So I've done a little bit of in that signature. And then I went and I did some, I think in this one, is it in this one? No, not that one, in another one. Mm. Oh, this one. It comes out beautifully on, on the darker tea stain paper. It shows up really nicely. So yeah, I've done a little bit on that one. But then I realized, oh, I want to do, I do want to do some decoupage with the napkins and that always looks better 
the napkin always looks better under the texture paste so I did that off camera I, I did that I've got this little glassine bag folded into one of the signatures so maybe I will have a play with this on camera and I do want to use some of the napkin so I'll find a bit I like probably this a similar a similar piece that I used on the other page so I'm just gonna get my water brush and I'm gonna just go around I'm gonna go down the middle there I don't want the butterfly Now, I mean, I've, I've cut these before as well, but I quite like the torn edge. I'm probably just going to take that bit out there. So decide what you want. Um, what I want <laughs> okay and then I'm going to use some Mod Podge and I've got a quite a wet brush so that mixes up the Mod Podge I just get some out and I just do it in the lid I don't know what I don't know what the measurements are meant to be I think you can just use straight Mod Podge as well I guess again I'm not this is not a tutorial this is just me crafting so if you want a tutorial on how to do napkin decoupage who would be good at that Artie, Artie Mays Andrea from Artie Mays would probably be right up there with that I'm sure she's got something on how to do it <laughs> and that's probably I always find that mine always looks more wrinkly than I would like but you can take an emery board or something to it apparently to get rid of the wrinkles if you don't like the wrinkles when it's dry And then I think you just paint this paint the medium over the top and smooth it all out as best you can I'm not that keen on that straight edge there but that's okay we'll probably cover all lots of this up or some of it anyway And just coat it in that glue. As smooth as you can. I 
There you go. So that's that. And then I'm going to give it a dry with my dryer. So excuse the noise. Right, what else do we have? I'm just wondering whether I put that little rose up there, whether that would look. I'm just gonna go around it with the water. sure got this bit of yellow it's just yellow isn't really the color I was thinking I wanted on this in the, in the here in the sun book now Let's see what happens if we do the uh, texture paste over the top. I don't know whether that will work. I wonder if we do the texture paste or whether we just do some Mod Podge, I mean gesso over the top. What I'm going to do hmm not sure what I'm going to do with this actually so that's the page and it's got a pocket in it what are we going to do with this side here we're going to open it up or I'm not quite sure at all. There we go, there's the bag. I'm not sure about it. These are, I mean, as we know, these are all things I'm, I'm learning. So once again, the signatures have got all mixed up. <laughs> Seems to be my forte. That one's dry now. One, two. See, that looks quite pretty. That's quite cute. Quite like that. those two shorties together and I think this is the 
bag out of there. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, see, this is where things get a little bit messy for me because I'm, I'm, I flip from one thing to another. And... It's hard to make sense of it, really. If you're watching, I imagine. on the pink so let's grab that nice pink rose sweep around with the water brush I don't know if this water brush has ever been used for watercolours <laughs> possibly not I'm not much of a painter either I like that, so I'm going to put that on. So, with your napkins, uh, you only want one layer, so you rip the backing layers off. Maybe most people. And so you end up with just the printed very top layer of the napkin. Most napkins are two, at least two, if not three. And so all you're gluing down is that very top printed piece of tissue. I quite like how that one's turned out. So that's probably enough. And that signature, possibly. And then this one's got the bag in it, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, oh, that's the local, if you can hear that siren, that's the local volunteer fire brigade siren. That goes off every now and then. There's obviously a fire or an accident or something that requires We're going to put napkin in this one. Maybe a little bit on the back here. A little bit of napkin on here. And we could do the bird, I suppose. Should we do the bird? See what it looks like. Might be absolutely lovely, absolutely lovely. <laughs> so I will try and edit this video so it makes some sense <laughs> to 
people who, or whoever's watching. But yeah, I imagine it's going to be a little bit sort of all over the place. So I ask for forgiveness for that. It's... Let's give the bird a go, shall we? And see the sort of shiny bit around where the glue is. So we might have to do some more, maybe even get the gesso out. There it is. And I don't know, maybe. Mess it up a bit. Not sure. Okay. So there we go. We've got a bit of texture going on in that little set of papers. That's cool. So yesterday I went to the post office and sent off the little giveaway book to Amy Russell who won it and I had been in maybe two days before just to price everything up because I had some happy mail I wanted to send and I just wanted to check that the I just wanted to check that the envelopes I was sending fit, fitted through. There's a slotted thing that if they fit through, you can send them as letters. And so that was cool. And I, uh, I priced it all up and that was fine. And then I obviously went back yesterday. And in them two days that I'd been away, all the postage prices had gone up. And there was a new system, a new customs form to fill out for the parcel. And, oh. and the ladies were like, oh, we're so sorry. I was like, oh, it's not your fault. It's just the way it is. So postage is just going up and up. 
but it was so nice yeah just to see three happy males go off and the book the little journal go off to the states so i sent happy mail to someone in new zealand who i um made contact with through online and through youtube through here lynn a lady called lynn and i sent hi lynn if you're watching <laughs> and i sent um something to australia as part of angela kerr's is it her 6,000 subby R-A-K give it, um, anyway, I thought that was a cool idea, what Angela Kerr was doing, so I thought, oh, I'd love to take part, part in that, so I didn't really, at that point, I hadn't got anyone to send anything to, but, so Angela gave me a name, and, um, that's gone off to her, and then something to a lovely lady in the States who I've also made contact with, who has sent me something and we're both just wondering <laughs> where in the world it is right now because it's been so long and it still hasn't arrived. But it'd be really funny if my thing to her arrives before hers gets here anyway. It's fun sending things away. I do get nervous though about sending things to people that they won't like what I've made or what I've selected to give them. But anyway, in the end, it's it's a gift and it's, I don't know, sometimes it's just the thought. I've always been so excited receiving things in the mail myself. Okay, noise. Quick. I just don't want the pocket to dry shut. All right, that's kind of cute. So I've got a little bit of texture paste on this one and some serviette texture paste. I might put some more texture paste over there. Texture paste, okay, so that's enough on that one. My sister. My sister Jo gave me these lovely cream. Oh, they feel so nice. Envelopes with this. I think they came with this little note paper. And that'd be quite a nice little thing to have in the journal. So I'm just going to... Okay, so that's a bit grungy now. That's a grungy old thing. I wasn't planning on doing like any ephemera as such, but this is kind of like a page. Because I'll probably maybe sew through it, I'm not sure. that's dry first I don't know if anyone else has this problem but 
my Tim Holtz ink pad is, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. It's never seemed right, this one. It's really wobbly and it, I've, ref I've just refreshed it. I haven't even had it for that long. I just don't know why it needs refreshing already. But anyway, maybe I got a dud. Who knows? I would love to get my hands on some old letters or old, well, even they don't even need to have the letters in it, just some old envelopes with that had been sent that someone that kept stamps and um, the stamped envelopes. It'd be cool, make cool pockets and things to go in a journal. I've seen some lovely ones watching videos and flip throughs of people's gorgeous journals. We just we have to pretend. Oh, that's real grungy now. I don't know where all that. See all the stuff coming off the top of the ink pad. What's that about? I think I need a new one. What do you reckon? And that one's not that old, so I don't know what happened with that. So, did we think this was going to go in here? So it's almost like another page because when we... When we sew through here, we'll catch... We'll catch that and that will be there. Hmm, that's quite cool. Yeah, but imagine if it was a real old envelope and it had like a stamp. And I mean, I could put a stamp on it, but it just wouldn't look the same. Wouldn't be as good. But I might do some. I'd have to run it through the embossing folder thing. But I'm scared it's going to cut it. But yeah, just wait. I'll turn the camera off and give it a go. Okay, it, it worked. So... Although the envelope doesn't fit right into the embossing powder, powder, embossing powder, embossing folder, so you've got this little line that can be covered up. So these are grunged up envelope. So you've got the reverse embossing on the other side, but I think that's okay. And then you can have something inside, like a little, or well, I had a little, I had a little something to put inside. I just don't know where I've put it, so I'm sure that'll turn up. So now I've got this one. I've got the first one I did, which has got hardly any on it. And then I put a piece of thin card underneath. And then for the last one, I put a little slightly heavier card underneath to just give it that bit more oh there you go and there's a little bit of paper that we could just tuck in there that suits me if you're wanting to do any inking on your pages it's Probably a good time to do it. Oops, I didn't check that was dry. Pretty dry. Um, what else? The other thing was some heat embossing. If you wanted to do some heat embossing on your pages. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. So it's probably not. So there we go that's all that's lots of decoration i might do a little bit more so we've got done some a bit of dry embossing we've done some napkin decoupage and we've done some modeling paste on our pages we need to decide which order we want these signatures to be in in the book i'm pretty sure that i want that to be my front 
page, so I'll probably go there. Something like that, I think. And have a last little look through to check there's nothing else I want to do. So I'm going to do that now, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for watching.